Gibbs. No, you can't. I used to do a lot more electronics on this channel than I have in a while. Uh, it just it just hasn't come up. I haven't had good projects. But uh, today I have one. It's a minor one, hopefully. Uh, and if you're seeing this at all, then it means it probably succeeded. Uh, or that it was catastrophic in an entertaining way. But at any rate, uh, let me show you what I'm working with here. So I recently uh, got this from a friend who works at a local uh, e-waste center. Uh, it's a mini DV camera. There we go. Takes a, a mini DV tape, um, but it's just in the uh, sort of upright uh, palm quarter format that was popular in this era. Mini DV, I think, introduced this form factor. Um, I could be wrong about that, but at any rate, uh, there were a bunch of these. This one's not that spectacular, but it's mine, and, and I didn't have one quite like it. Uh, so I'd like to get it working, but there's a, a big problem with that. This is the battery this camera takes, uh, and it says infolithium on it, but let me take it out. Now, a lot of people are familiar with infolithium packs. That's what this says on it, infolithium. But if you are familiar with them, you're probably going, hey, <laughs> that's no infolithium. Well, it is. Um, that's the nomenclature that Sony applied to their lithium ion packs that contained a microcontroller that stores information about the battery, I think how many times it's been charged, that sort of thing. I, I could be wrong about that, I've never looked into it. But anyway, Sony was very proud of this, so they trademarked it. But this term actually applies to all sorts of batteries. The ones that uh, probably more people are familiar with are these. This is also infolithium, it's third party, because uh, a whole crap load of modern video gear from China uses these batteries. Uh, I don't know why they standardized on these in particular, but you can just buy nearly everything uh, <laughs> in the video market that'll run off of these nowadays. Um, anything that requires tons of power, you know, will run off of the V-mount batteries like I've shown you in previous videos. But if something is small and, and uses relatively low current, uh, it'll usually run off of one of these. Case in point, uh, I've got this guy here. This is a preview monitor. You plug in HDMI and you uh, screw this on top of your camera so you can get a, a larger picture from it uh, than you get out of the little built-in LCD, if it even has one. Uh, and this is from Feel World, although I'm sure it's sold under a thousand different names. And on the back, there you go. You got your infolithium mount. And in fact, I even have this guy here, which takes a pair of these and adapts them into a V-mount. Now, the runtime on this is terrible, but for things that don't actually use that much current but still run off of a V-mount style battery, uh, this actually works quite well. So anyway, the infolithiums are very, very popular, but they come in all different shapes and sizes. This isn't even the only one that looks like this. For instance, Sony used these shorter ones in a bunch of their cameras. My CD Mavica takes this size battery, and this actually won't fit into the same slot that this goes in, and I don't know why. It really seems like they ought to be compatible, but they're not. So the point is, just because something's infolithium doesn't mean you can necessarily get a replacement battery pack for it, uh, because they make so many different things that are called infolithium, and indeed, this one does need to be replaced. It is flat dead. I'm told by the person who gave it to me, uh, that uh, it holds power for maybe a few seconds and then shuts off. And they actually gave me two of these batteries. This is the other one, and it's very comical because it looks <laughs> very much like what it is, which is this style of plate, which was clearly intended for a flat pack battery like this, which looks very good on this camera, I should point out. Looks like it's part of the camera. And then they wanted more juice. So instead of using flat pack cells, they used round cells of the sort that are that are used in most things nowadays except for cell phones uh, and just put this hump on the back which looks uh, very much like you know <laughs> a normal infolithium battery except i guess it probably has four cells in there instead of two so probably a pretty high capacity pack well it only says 2700 milliamp hours so that's not actually that hot anyway brass tacks uh i gotta make this thing go so i'm gonna need to replace these batteries well there's a problem with that um you can't get replacements for all batteries people will say that and it's not true. If you go online and look up this specific pack, this is the NPF 300. There's also uh, the NPF 100, uh, which is this guy here. And then they also make an in-between one called the NPF 200, which if I had to guess, is probably just two of these cells instead of four. None of them are available online. Now someone's gonna comment and say, no, no, I just found it. No, I'm sorry, what you found was a listing for new old stock. They're selling one that's been in a warehouse for at least 15 years and it is dead. I've tried buying them before and they don't work. Usually they emit like this really unpleasant urine odor and like maybe hold a charge for a couple minutes. So I cannot replace these batteries with the same batteries. I'm gonna have to do something nasty to get this camera running. Now you could say, well, just plug it into the wall. 
Well, uh, as I've discussed before in my videos, uh, a lot of camcorders never had a reasonable way to input DC power. This one, uh, per the manual, doesn't use a battery dildo, fortunately, uh, because those are impossible to obtain. Uh, but you can build one, and, and I could do that. I could just cut one of these open and, and solder leads onto it and hook up a DC power supply. But it, this one actually does have a DC input, which is right there. So good luck finding one of those. I've never seen this iPod connector kind of thing in my life. Um, I wouldn't even know what to search for on eBay, and I promise nobody on eBay knows the correct term for this. Every single one of these is currently in a landfill. I'm never going to be able to replace it, and short of opening the camera up, finding some pads somewhere to solder onto, and adding wires and a hole in the chassis, I'm not gonna be able to get DC into this thing. Obviously, I'm gonna have to cut the battery open and modify it. Now, there's a few different ways I could do this. One would be to um, break the bottom off, just this sled here, and like I said, solder onto the, the tabs on the back, uh, I don't love that plan because it's gonna end up being super flimsy. So what I wanna do instead is just cut this part off, just the part that would contain the cells. That's gonna leave me with a solid slab down here, and then I'll be able to uh, put new batteries on it somehow. Now there's a few different ways I could do this, um, but I'm gonna take a really cheap, hackish approach uh, because working with lithium cells sucks. Every time I talk about this sort of thing, someone goes, well, just uh, put new cells in it. They'll use that, that wonderful word, just. Oh, sure, just. I love just. Anytime someone says just, it usually means they have not done it themselves. These are the sort of cells that uh, get used in these things. This is an 18650. This almost certainly contains four of them, and uh, the other ones contain shorter or fewer of them, but they're all basically like this. It's like a AA battery, except that if I short the ends here, this will explode and start a fire. So I don't like working with these, but in addition to that, you can't solder them. Someone in the comments is gonna say, oh, of course you can. No, 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 you can't. It is not safe to solder on a lithium ion battery. In order to attach these things together, you need to use a welder, not a soldering iron, but a welder, which uses a very sharp, short pulse of high voltage uh, to actually bond, actually melt and bond a metal strap onto the end contact here. I don't have one, I'm not buying one. That doesn't sound like fun either. I hate working with lithium ion cells, okay? I won't do it. I'm just gonna use the prepackaged ones that are already out there, that are safe to work with. This can go on here. When you buy battery packs like this, there's like a 50% chance it'll come with a really cheap Chinese charger. They're usually pretty much identical to this. In fact, I think these all come out of a single factory. This one's for charging Canon camcorder batteries, obviously, but the underlying charger mechanism is exactly the same in all of them, and they just have this sled on top that adapts to whatever battery pack is being charged. Well, these come in every conceivable shape and size to fit every kind of battery, and that includes infolithium. A while back, I bought one of these, and it came uh, with a charger, and this was the sled that was on it. And as you can see, I've already been around the block with this because I had another project where I wanted to use uh, an infolithium battery, but uh, I didn't want to uh, solder onto the battery itself for obvious reasons. So I took this sled off of the charger, just like this, and I soldered on some wires. Bob's your uncle, there's your power, right? Well, if I've got this, and if I cut the top off this, I can put this on that. And then I'll have an adapter that goes from infolithium modern, NPF, L, whatever it is, to infolithium abandoned old standard nobody has made in years. So I'm gonna try and make that. Now, in order to do this, there's really just one way to start some people are going to be worried. Let me justify this. This camera is not a priceless relic. Um, they made lots of them. They made lots of other varieties. I'm sure this battery was used on lots of other cameras. And I'm not going to mess up this thing's, you know, museum quality anyway, because if you were going to put this on display, you'd use this battery. And I'm not going to be modifying that battery. So I'm not worried about destroying something that's special. Uh, and in addition, there is no other way to get this going that would be cleaner than this. In order to actually take this out and use it as a camcorder, it needs a proper battery pack. So if I do a good job of this, and especially if I can make it look good, although I doubt that, this will actually be something I can use rather than something that's going to sit in a box forever and just be an inert lump of plastic. That's my justification. Now, the other thing, the thing that actually worries me is that the tool I'm using is this cutoff wheel. And I wasn't gonna do that because typically you wouldn't use an abrasive wheel for plastic, but 
I was looking this up and found that uh, Dremel actually does recommend this for use on ABS, which is certainly what this is. So, I mean, that feels weird, but hopefully if I run this at a low speed, I'm not gonna melt the plastic or anything and we'll get a nice clean cut, but we'll see. So this is gonna make a tremendous mess, so we're definitely gonna need something to protect my bench. And there's that. Now my biggest actual concern is that while I'm cutting this open, I could short something together and start a fire, uh, but I've got a big cast iron pan nearby and I could deal with that if it happens. So, uh, wish me luck. People said to go slow, but I think that's maybe a little too slow. We'll see. All right, so I'm through almost everywhere. This is pretty ragged, but it'll uh, clean up once I get at it with a rasp or something. Uh, but I'm actually not gonna cut any further because um, I can actually see through there that I've gotten down to the lithium cells themselves. That's the thing about these packs and why you should be very careful about this sort of shenanigan. The only reason I'm doing this this way is because I'm positive these cells are so drained that they just don't have the energy in them uh, to catch fire. But if I were to just keep on cutting, I would cut into the cells, short them out for sure, and if they do have any power in them right now, uh, I'd have a fire on my hands. You should never do this sort of thing unless you are ready for a fire. I'm not saying don't do it, obviously you're gonna do it, but just be ready for a fire. So I'm gonna stop at this point and I'm gonna use uh, just a screwdriver to finish breaking this off and, and maybe a, a file to get the last little bit of plastic out of there. You wanna be particularly careful when you're doing this about the ends. The sides are not that dangerous because the cells are surrounded by a steel case, but the ends are where the contacts are and putting a screwdriver in there, something like that, uh, you can totally short them out. Really, seriously, this is not messing around. This is a dangerous thing I'm doing. Okay, there we go. That guy's willing to come out now. Uh, but the problem that I'm encountering is that the batteries are, it feels like they're glued into the top shell, which is very possible, either glued or, or like adhesive stripped. So if I were to try and pull this off, what would happen is I would rip the contacts off of the bottom plate, ruining it completely. So you gotta be ginger at this point. You don't wanna use metal implements to try and pry these out of here, but you do need to pry them out. So let me see what I've got. Did I just break these? Yes, I did. Oh man, it's really hard to get these out. Whenever someone says just replace the lithium cells, I'm just gonna show them this video. Yeah, man, just. It's so straightforward. Just do it. So I cheated a little bit. I used these guys, which are metal, but I very carefully got in here and snipped there. That allowed me to uh, tear the rest of the end off. So I'm gonna go ahead and lose that. All right, so here's our charge controller circuitry. Oh boy, that is sophisticated. There's more in there than I expected. The things we're interested in are actually down here at the bottom. There's a couple metal strips. There's one here, one there, and one there. And those are our primary contacts. And we just wanna get down to those. Uh, to do that, we just need to get this board separated from the cells. This is one of the less pleasant uh, lithium packs I've worked on, uh, which is not a, a large number, um, but I hate all of them equally. Uh, this one, however, is making it very hard for me to actually get to the terminals that I need to desolder to get this away from the batteries. Uh, I think I might be able to just pop them from the front. If I just suck this solder here, there, there, and there, this might come away. So let's get the station and carefully pop those joints. I think I've got it. Let's see if this will pull away now. It wants to come away. Uh, maybe, maybe this one is still sticking. There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, so the batteries are now safely removed. And if I look at the sides, I actually don't see any marks on them. 
I just barely scratched this one. It appears that I successfully avoided actually damaging the lithium cells. That's the ideal outcome. Now I gotta figure out how to dispose of these things, but that's my problem. And finally, we just need to get the PCB off. We don't wanna cut it, we wanna desolder it because uh, the little uh, like nickel steel strips that connect to the battery contacts, uh, you don't wanna have to replace those, uh, especially because there's so little material down here. There's really just nothing to solder to. So you wanna desolder these, not clip them. Okay, that's two, and then the last one, I think is actually this guy here that I didn't fully release. There we go. Something's still grabbing. Oh, okay. These ones out here, I got them to sort of lift up, but they didn't fully release. So I gotta hit them again. There we go. All right, and there's the PCB. We can throw that away. All right, so we've got what we came for. We got access to the bare contacts, and the only ones we need are gonna be the outside two, uh, because uh, this one's positive, this one's negative. Uh, fortunately, they are labeled. They're almost always labeled. I don't know that I've ever seen a lithium pack where these weren't labeled, which uh, terrifying to imagine they're out there, but they must be. This one here is your charge control terminal. I have not yet met a device that will refuse to use a battery that doesn't have that signal there. So you can generally just fold that down and ignore it. So our goal here is just to solder on our uh, sled to these two terminals here, and that's it. First, uh, let's clean up some of the schmutz. Need to go a little bit faster than that, so let's go back to the rotary tool. Okay, uh, well, I don't think I can do a whole lot better than that. Let's just get the crumbs out of here and then we'll see what we have. All right, that looks a lot better than it could. Smoothed over all the rough edges. I don't know if they'll be accessible once we get the sled in there, but let's take a look at that now. Now that we've got access to the terminals, the next step is to get this guy installed in some way. Now, uh, obviously it's gonna fit within the footprint, that's good. We do want to cover up these terminals. We don't want them exposed. So if this were here, that would be okay. And I don't mind too much if this is open, uh, but it'll make it difficult to get the wires around there. So probably I'm gonna wanna do it like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use thinner wires for this. These were for a higher current application, uh, but I'm gonna put some new wires on this thing and then curl them back like that. And then they'll sit down in the cavity there and attach to the terminals on either end. So I think, that's a, I think that's a plan, I think that'll work. There's one other question, which is how do we get this to stay in place on top of this? I might be able to just bolt it. If I've got some uh, flush head screws, uh, I may be able to uh, take this bottom plate off here and just do a nut and bolt arrangement and, and clamp these together. I don't know yet. Let's do the proof of concept first. Let's solder it in there, see if it runs the camera, then I'll worry about getting it mounted. I don't know where my larger tips are. I haven't used anything other than this tiny one in about a year. There we go. It's always a good idea when doing something like this to, uh, even though you have your labels on one side, transfer them to the other, unless you're much smarter than me, which I can believe. You'd think for someone like me that I would have a whole bunch of spare wire around all the time, but I actually rarely do. Um, I recently tore apart an old electronic organ and I was able to get some wiring out of that. So this is the first time in quite some time that I've actually had spare wire for projects. You'd think you could just buy it, right? Just get online, buy some wire. But it's really hard to buy wire online. Most of the stuff on Amazon is basically fraudulent. And if you go to websites like uh, Mauser, you can buy wire there, but it, like 
there's just so much to consider. There's just way too many variables. And so I can't figure out what to buy. And a lot of it is incredibly expensive. So it makes me worry that I'm buying some sort of hyper specialty wire. This stuff is um, copper with PVC on it. So it works for my purposes. This uh, might not be super ideal on account of it's about 20 gauge and it's solid core, but I doubt that this thing pulls that much power. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Just realized I soldered this all off screen, but it's soldering, you've seen it before. I, I put the wires on the lead and then I heated the lead up. All right, so this one here, um, there's the positive. I could have cut away more of the case here, but uh, I don't want to lose any more plastic than I have to. So I'm just going to bend, going to bend this guy down and see if I can get an iron on it in that configuration. Yeah, I think I can work with that. Let's do it on the other one too. I think this might actually work. Oh, this is really touchy. You know, I might need to actually fix this in place somehow. I think that has it firmer than it was. Let's give it a shot. Okay, and there we go. That is a very cold solder joint, but it'll work for my purposes since I'm not going to be stressing this thing very hard. Ooh, that's an even colder solder joint. I'm gonna try and add a little more lead on there. Okay, there we go. All right, well, they're both attached. It should work, let's give it a shot. We really can uh, just test this now, uh, simple as putting the plate in here and putting the battery in that thing. And if it works, it works. So let's see what we get. Let's just double check our polarity. You know what I'm really hating here is that this says positive here, but on the bottom it says negative. Let's touch the positive terminal here and the negative there. And it doesn't, doesn't beep. And on the positive, it does beep. Wow. Yeah, sure. Sure enough. Oh, that makes sense because of course the sled is some arbitrary Chinese charger design, but this is the Sony Infolithium design. So it would make sense that the pins wouldn't be in the same order. And just to be sure, let's check from positive here to the one I have labeled positive here, and we have conductivity. So let's put a battery in there. Okay, battery in, camera on, oh, and there it is. Not that I'm terribly surprised, but for infralithium battery only. Ah, uh, it's upset because the, um, the sensor uh, pin isn't there. Oh my God, did it just shut off? I have not yet met a device that will refuse to use a battery that doesn't have that signal there. Unless the battery just ran out of power, I think I've just met my first device that outright refuses to operate without a real infolithium. <laughs> oh no! So it would seem my project has ended in failure, but let's not give up yet. Let's try a little harder. I'm pretty sure that this is the data output from this battery. I, I think it does have an infolithium uh, compatible charge controller in it. So I'm gonna try hooking this up just with uh, bare alligator leads um, to this battery. I'm just gonna hold them on there. And we'll see if this will play ball uh, if it actually does get the, the data signal. If not, we have other options. This is really janky because uh, the holes aren't big enough to clip the alligator clips on. So I just have to sort of hold them precariously in midair. Okay. We're starting up and that will do it. So it will accept this as a real infolithium if we can hook up this data contact, but the sled doesn't have one. So what are we going to do? Well, we better add one, All right? So the data contact is right there, which is right about there. So we need to get a contact here somehow. All right, here's the plan. I've got this paper clip and that's gonna be our contact for the data terminal. I'm just gonna drill a hole here, poke the paper clip through. So I'm gonna take the bottom panel off so I can see what I'm doing. And also, cause I'm gonna to need to pass the wires through there after I drill the hole. 
unsurprisingly, the uh, inside here consists of nothing other than a couple of wires and a PCB uh, that actually uh, represents the, the contacts on the bottom. So really, in the future, if I was doing another one of these, I'd probably open it up and desolder these uh, and uh, solder my external wires directly into those rather than going on to these awful contacts on the bottom. Uh, live and learn, I suppose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this smaller gauge paper clip that I have here, and I'm going to heat it up with the iron, push it through the hole from this side, then go to the other side and heat up the thicker paper clip that I'm going to be really using and push it through from that side, and that should give me a nice tight fit. It might even lock itself in place, though I doubt that. Okay, I think we're through. All right, I've cut out a reasonable shape of a uh, paper clip material here. Just gonna push it through the hole. All right, I had to bend it a couple times to get it in there, but there it is. Uh, let's see if our battery will still fit. It seems to. And then let's see if we get good contact. Uh, so right now, we're getting the infolithium battery only message. Let me hook up the center pin, power cycle it. And there we go. Okay, so that'll work. I'm just gonna go ahead and dribble some super glue on there. Lock this thing in place. Hit that with a little accelerator. All right, now we just need a little more wire. Used a very light touch with the solder so that I don't melt the paper clip any further into the body and displace it. Seems solid enough. Now we just need to put this back together and pass this wire through the bottom on the way. All right, and finally, we just need to uh, attach the last pin to the battery, which by the way, this entire time, I just had the uh, camcorder right near where I'm soldering and cutting and whatnot, because I forgot I could disconnect the battery from it. Okay, hypothetically, that's all there is to it. Let's reinstall this guy. Let's put the new infolithium into it. Does it work? Yes, it does. Outstanding. Can the motors run? They sure can. Well, it sure looks like everything works. Yep, there it is. Recording video. It sure looks like everything works. Yep, there it is. Recording video. All right, so it's 100% functional. It likes the new battery, which means I can use any old Amazon, you know, China garbage battery with it. Looks like my paperclip trick worked. So now all that's left is to do something about this. Now that I've had this thing apart, I no longer believe this plastic will actually hold a screw. So I don't know that I can screw these together. Uh, what I'm gonna try first is I'm just gonna try gaffer tape. Obviously there's the problem that if this makes the uh, tray too thick, it's not gonna seat into the camera and the battery won't seat into it, but let's see if that's actually the case. Well, that seems to go in fine with the tape there. A uh, little rough on the camera, though. That's a non-starter. That's not going to go. Why is that? Oh, it's because it's all the way out here. So if I get rid of that, it'll probably be okay. Okay, that looks like it mounted all right. All 
All right, well, I'm no Ben Heck, but if it all fits, uh, it's remarkably solid. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, try this guy. Uh, it's a little tight. The tape is interfering with the battery a little bit, but it went in. Uh, let's see if all this tape will still allow it to fit. Oh, nope. I just realized I covered up the notches on the end. I'm going to have to cut those out. Let's try that again. Do we work? Yes, we do. All right. Oh, no. Oh, no. What went wrong? That's weird. The uh, paper clip is still there. Oh, my God. I have once again actually covered up the contacts with the tape. Oh, boy, I'm smart. There it is. <laughs> Man, what am I doing? Come on. Oh, and while I'm at it, I didn't cover up that. Let me fix that. All right, and we have a picture, so I believe that means it worked. All right, well, that was a pretty wacky adventure. Um, I wasn't really sure it was going to work. I'm glad that it did in the end. I don't know how durable this is going to be, but it actually looks better than it could. Uh, I have to say, uh, I only recently got introduced to gaffer tape. I'd known about it for some time, but this stuff is a lot more flexible and a lot more uh, sort of pliable and, and easy to work with compared to duct tape. It, it's not quite as strong, but you don't necessarily always want strong. In fact, duct tape is often too strong. Also, it, it doesn't leave any residue on pretty much any surface. So if I have to take this off at some point, it's gonna be a lot easier than dealing with duct tape residue. I do think there's probably better ways to do this. Um, if I were doing this again, I'd probably look for an infolithium sled that actually had the sensor contact. I didn't realize I was going to need it. And I also suspect that somewhere out there are sleds that are intended for being used for a DIY thing like this. So I wouldn't have to solder onto the little pads on the bottom, that sort of thing. Uh, but with those things said, I, I do think this worked quite well. I don't know that I would suggest you try this yourself per se. Uh, in addition to the safety issues I outlined earlier, uh, I've just messed up way more of these than I've succeeded with. Um, usually when I try this, I've done it maybe 15 or 20 times, uh, the thing I'm working on just ends up in the trash, either because I destroyed the battery itself or I destroyed the device while experimenting. I never do this with stuff that's worth anything. Again, this camera is nothing particularly special, so I didn't mind experimenting on it. But if this had been something really unusual, I probably would have found somebody who was better at working with batteries and had them actually rebuild the battery pack. That is certainly doable. It's just not usually worth it unless you're already really good at it and have all the tools. Anyway, uh, if you liked this, uh, let me know in the comments. I sort of got away from doing workbench type videos for a long time, kind of pivoted into the narrative sort of stuff that people seem to like. But uh, if you dig this, let me know in the comments and I'll maybe do more of these in the future. Uh, if you really like this, consider supporting me on Patreon. It makes it a lot easier for me to get stuff like this and the equipment I'm using to record it and so on. And I'm really grateful to everybody who's supporting me already on there. And everybody else, thanks for watching.